Right guys, stop what you're doing right now because everyone is playing the game wrong, making an absolute fool of themselves and wasting valuable time. And every other YouTuber who's made this kind of video is giving you the wrong advice. What if I told you you can get 147 badges at 2000 gold, no group required, no good gear required, and every single class and player can do it right now in a couple of days? You will farm badges faster than doing heroic dungeons and get a truckload of gold in the process. Most other videos are recommending to farm heroics for badges. Now this is obviously a very solid way to get badges. You could be farming the badges way faster, hassle free and get gold in the process. Today guys, we're going to be counting down the top 10 things that you should be doing when you hit level 80 in Wrath of Lich King Classic. Just quickly guys, Still, only 24% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. Don't be afraid of that sub button, it's totally free and it supports creators massively. But anyway, let's jump in. So, how do you get 147 badges and 2000 gold in a couple of days? Well, to do this, you actually go out into the open world and do quests. Now, you probably think I've gone insane, but definitely hear me out on this one. Quests right now are giving badges. Especially the quests in Storm Peaks and Ice Crown actually worked out you can get 147 badges from quests alone. That does, however, include a couple of chains in Zodrak and Dragon Blight, although you've probably done them while leveling up. What you want to do is focus on completing all of the quest lines in Ice Crown and Storm Peaks. These quests are throwing you badges like it's going out of fashion. So get an add-on like Quest DC, so you always know where to pick up new quests and basically just it's very simple. Complete every single quest that you can see in sight in Ice Crown and Storm Peaks, and you're going to get a truckload of badges. And you're also going to get loads of gold. I worked out if you do other badge quests, you get 1,500 gold in quest gold rewards at level 80. Now, that's not taking into consideration the vendor value of gear and also the quests that don't give badges. So it's definitely going to be in the ballpark of 2,000 to 3,000 gold, if not more. If you really pump, you can easily get both zones completed in a couple of days but for most people it'll probably take three to four days bearing in mind you can only farm 50 badges of heroism per day by doing heroics so it would take you three days to get the same amount of badges that you could get in two days if not one day if you're an absolute tryhard we have an extra 2000 to 3000 gold so this is definitely worth doing Secondly, you want to be making sure that you're unlocking your reps. It's an absolute waste of time doing heroics without the tab art. You get previous gear from reps and your enchants, which are going to be, well, relevant for the entire life of Wrath of the Lich King, so you definitely want this done. The current tour, reputation gives the caster enchant, Argent Crusade the tank one, and the melee DPS, you want your Knights of the Ebon Blade, but also includes Hunters. You also want to do your Sons of Hodor questline for your shoulder enchant, just full of a chain quest in Storm Peaks, like I mentioned earlier. You also want to be making sure, pretty much straight away at level 80, that you're always doing at least your daily heroic, even if you are going down the quest route or farming badges, because the daily heroic gives you an emblem of valor. It's the only way to get it in the game until the raids are released, which is happening actually in a few hours of me making this video, and it'll be a few hours behind this video actually being released. So you definitely want to be doing this every day because Emblems of Valor will unlock best in slot gear for Phase 1. The next one is fairly obvious, actually do heroics for the gear and the emblems. List yourself in the group finder rather than going on the LFG bulletin board. You can get groups even faster than you did with the dungeon finder, from my experience anyway of playing on private servers. So it's actually turned out that the LFG tool that Blizzard implemented is way better than the dungeon finder, funny enough. The only problem, if you're playing a free warrior or a rep paladin in Wrath, you're going to be waiting hours for someone to finally be desperate enough to invite you to a group. But no worries, because while you wait, you can play this new mobile game that I'm surprised that no other YouTuber has ever talked about before, and it's called Raid Shadow Legends. One of the best things about Raid is definitely the Doom Tower. This has some of the most challenging and tactical fights that the game has ever seen. You will have to build a team of absolute Giga Chad champions to climb the Doom Tower especially as you only have a limited amount of time to defeat the last boss for all of the insane loot. 
You'll also see this a lot with the new dungeon that's just been released, the Iron Twins Fortress. And this is what I like about Red the most, it has all the core elements that we loved about the old school turn based RPGs and it's updated that a little bit with a splash of MOBA design with the champion system. They've also done a rework of my favourite champion, the Ultimate Death Knight, and everyone can get this champion for free if they just play Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th. If you use a promo code DKRISES, you'll be able to level up your strongest champion all the way to level 50 5 star ascension. And this promo code is available for new and existing players. And if you haven't given Raid a spin yet, if you click my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen, you're going to get loads of loot worth about $30. You get a brand new champion called Tar Rail. You get 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard, which is the currency to unlock new champions. But anyway, thanks to Raid for supporting the channel and giving our viewers loads of free stuff. Now to move on with the video. Now for number 5, I recommend farming an offset piece. So what do I mean by this? So if you're a hybrid class, you can also perform the role of tanking or healing. There's a number of advantages to having an offset and an offspec. First of all, you'll be able to farm heroics faster in the future if you need the emblems for gold or you need them for heirlooms. Obviously, if you queue as a tank or a healer, you'll find groups much faster. I'll tell you what I'm doing and the reason why I'm farming a tank set on my Death Knight. In the future, I will be farming dungeons or maybe raids for gold or for mounts. And obviously, having a tank set is going to be much better for farming. I've actually nearly got a full tank set just from like off spec rolling in heroics when the tank hasn't needed the piece and also holding on to certain quest rewards that are fairly decent tank pieces. Honestly I've actually been farming tank pieces just as fast as DPS pieces because I've just gone through the extra step of asking the tank, yo do you need that piece? He says no and then I just roll need and it's all good. Now sixthly is actually something you shouldn't do something I'd recommend against, and it's buying Titan Steel weapons. Unless you're in some ultra sweaty guild going for Realm First, Clears, the Titan Steel weapons are an absolute waste of gold. Nax Rammers literally drops trash loot that's better than Titan Steel weapons. Plus, because of how Wrath Lich King raiding works, you will be able to complete every single Phase 1 raid on two difficulty modes, 10-man and 25-man, for a chance to get loot. Long story short, you're going to be replacing these weapons faster than the YouTubers who boycotted WoW coming back to making YouTube videos about World of Warcraft. You want to be doing it in Winter Grasp whenever it is up. It pops every 3 hours. So that's going to be 12am, 3am, 6am, 9am, 12pm, 3pm, 6pm, 9pm, 12am. I think you get the idea. Basically, whenever you see 3, 6, 9 or 12 on the clock, that is when Winter Grasp is popping. Right now, this is the best way to farm on it. It's the best bang for your buck for time spent. So if you're farming PvP gear, if you're doing arenas and wrath, you definitely want to be doing it basically whenever you can. The PvP gear, it's decent for PvE, but because it has resilience on it, you are effectively wasting an entire potential secondary stat. So I'd only recommend getting pieces here from PvP to fill out your pre bis set if you've been really unlucky getting certain pieces. The trinkets for instance aren't actually that bad, obviously you need good RNG and to win rolls of other people to get good trinkets from heroics, so the ones from Winter Grasp can be a good option there. You can also buy heirlooms with the Stonekeeper shards, they do have XP boost but they kind of also are not as good as the other ones that you get from badges because you have PvP stats on them, but if you're going to take a more chilled PvP leveling route then they are really good. Stonekeeper shards can also be converted into more honor points at the Winter Grasp vendor, you just have to buy the token, click it and it turns into 2000 honor. Get your professions grinded up for your bonuses, for instance you only need engineering at level 405 to get your glove enchant and your nitro boots, Bob's your uncle don't need to grind it all the way up to 450 because right now grinding professions all the way up is very very expensive if you don't intend on doing profession gold flips or other crazy stuff then leveling up professions probably just isn't worth it until the prices go down some professions are pretty cheap to level up right now like tailoring due to the high volume of frost with cloth on the auction house because obviously lots of people in the open world leveling and they're acquiring frost with cloth to put on the auction house but at the end of the day it is up to you how much gold you want to spend 
on your profession because obviously there is other benefits to grinding your professions all the way up. I mean, to be honest, when it comes to engineering, like it is obviously purely cosmetic stuff and fun stuff when you level up professions to max. There is some convenient things, obviously like Jeeves, that you can get later and a portable mailbox, which are actually pretty useful for gold farming. And when it comes to the goggles, I mean, personally, I've not even gone for that because I just bought a Titan Steel helmet for like 1.5K. I feel like that's just the cheaper option. But anyway, let's move on. One thing you should definitely do though is your profession dailies. You will unlock new recipes, which grants you better access to making more gold. This is especially the case with jewel crafting because the more gems you have, the more potential that you can make gold because if you've only got like one recipe, you can't just like put 20 of the same gems of one certain gem cut, can you? It's better to spread out different gem cuts across the auction house to make gold faster. The same goes for secondary professions like cooking and fishing. A fishing daily has a chance to reward a quest reward. That will give you five cooking tokens, which is quite nice because then you can use that to buy recipes like the fish feast and all of the buff food that you can make gold with. And my last tip is actually the most important, okay? Remember to chill the hell out and have fun. Don't min-max the game into oblivion and burn out and make the game boring for yourself and quit and go and play League of Legends or some crap instead. So many people made this mistake in TBC. The population drop-off after the first few months was absolutely insane. All the classes are way more fun in Wrath Lich King Classic. The class design in Wrath has a lot more depth. It's more interesting, more engaging than just spamming Shadow Bolt for like two years like we did in TPC Classic, well I did anyway pretty much. So if you get bored of a class you can just try out another. Leveling Ult is much easier now with heirlooms and there's so many great catch up mechanics because of the improved badge system. We've also got Heroic Plus Dungeons coming out soon with Ulduar which will drop raid loot so it's even easier to get your alts geared up and then eventually you know Trial of a Grand Crusader and Forge of Souls etc. All those dungeons are going to release that give really really good gear. The point is this is a very alt friendly expansion. I think I might actually transfer my mage from Season of Mastery to Raffle Lich King Classic and level it up rather than getting a boost to be honest but well, to be honest I might do both. Who knows? Anyway my name is Meta Goblin to the next video. Ciao.